Brian, what's good, bro? How you doing today, Mr. Rodrigo? Mr. Rodrigo, damn, bro, it made me feel old. Sen Senor Rodrigo, my bad. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Just chilling at the house, planning, you know, things for 2021. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about you? Yeah, today I, so I'm actually trying to move out. So I've been just okay. like looking for apartments. Um, I went to a client's office this morning, did some work. It was easy. So um, pretty chill day today. Not a lot going on. Cool, cool. Where are you trying to move to? Where, where are you, by the way? I, I live in Herndon. So it's like about 20 minutes out of DC. Okay. Um, so I just live with my dad right now. So I'm just trying to move out so I can just be free to make my own decisions. Can like, you know, I have to become an adult at some point, you know, pay rent and all that stuff. So how old are you? 21. Oh man, you're young, bro. You're yeah. man. If I was 21 doing what you're doing, Ryan, bro, <laughs> I'd, probably, I'd probably be a millionaire by now. I would oh, love that. How far are you from Richmond? To about two hours. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. I might have a shoot coming up over there. Oh, that's what's up. Um, that's, that's a cool. long, that's cool. long journey for you. What up? I said, that's a long journey for you from Florida, right? To all the way yeah. to Virginia? Yeah, it's for one of our clients who work, work with down here. They have their headquarters up there, and we might be doing some training videos and stuff, and they're okay. just leaning towards possibly just doing it closer to their headquarters than anything, so. Yeah. Yeah, bro. So what's up? Cool, cool. Bro, I want to say, um, you know, we've been friends on Instagram for a little bit. And, you know, you're one of the people that I actually see out there that I'm like, this kid is doing it right. I think you're you're taking a lot of the right initiatives or stuff that you're doing. So, um, you know, kind of wanted to bring you on and just kind of talk uh, to you and just, you know, kind of figure out what have you been doing? What do you think has been working with you? And then, you know, where do you need help with them growing? Because I'll tell you, bro, like the stuff you put out, like you put out a lot of great marketing content, talking to clients, like you put out content that I think to myself, like I need to record that video. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's how I know that you're doing, that, like you're on the right path. Cause like, these are a lot of, you know, these are a lot of things that I think I'm like, fuck, I should be doing this, but I'm already so busy ahead of like with everything I already have going on that I don't get to it but I just think you know just if you were able to just share some insight with people that are watching this video of just like what your journey has been like and what you're doing just to be able to provide people some value so I mean can you tell us a little bit about yourself yeah of course so this is going to be a, a bit of a monologue but I'll try to you know hit some points that that really tell my story and not get lost in the details right so um in high school, I found out about Gary Vaynerchuk, right? One of my friends oh, showed me about him. Okay. And I immediately start grinding like 50 plus hours a week at like 16 years old at the local movie theater to me. And I'm just like, like, yo, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what business it is for me, but it's going to be a business that I want to do. So I'm stacking all my money, saving all my money. Fast forward to June, 2018. So quite a few years ahead. I worked a bunch of different jobs and I was like, like, I got to start a business. Saw somebody doing photography and I was like, if they're getting paid, those photos suck. I could do a better job. Uh, so I picked up a camera. I knew nothing. I just start trying to learn as much as I can. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm shooting pictures of Anything, you know, like everything. The, the, the leaves, like, a, you know, a dollar bill, like all these random things. And, and I got, I had a lot of people around me that steered me down the right path. So um, for a while, I started specializing in portraits. So I was like, yeah, if you need portraits, hit me up. I would post only portraits. And I, I was like, yeah, you know, this is nice. I'm getting clients, whatever. Um, but I realized that I couldn't scale, you know, like to where I want to be by just doing portraits. Um, so I start trying with video and that was sometime mid 2019, I believe. Um, uh, trying to just put together a story and all that stuff. And yeah, eventually I started getting clients for that. My clients actually really cared about you know, the video. And then, uh, yeah, so I, I started transitioning slowly towards uh, video. It was kind of one of those things where I was like, hey, I'm Ryan, photographer, videographer. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, I have 10 times more fun and I make more money on my video shoots. So let me just do, um, you know, focus on marketing and saying, hey, I'm Ryan, videographer. So that's that started about six months ago. And, and I've been just pushing hard, like, hey, I'm a videographer. I make videos. Um, uh, and recently, uh, I've been having some great success with Facebook advertising for one of my clients. 
So my offer is kind of in limbo right now of what I actually want to offer, but what is your I offer right what, now? My, my offer right now is videos, like marketing videos for businesses. Um, but to be honest, that's like not really an offer because the m majority of the work that I'm taking right now is like, I want to do videos, but if you come to me and it's something video related, like I'll take care of it. It's not an offer. Like, Hey, I noticed that you're missing X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. Let's fix that. And that's what I'm trying to offer. So in for 2021, I've been pitching to a bunch of clients. Um, the initial thing is Facebook ads. And then from there, I want to offer my second upsell as like photo or video content. Um, because so you're, so you're going more into it. You're you're and I think it's a, it's a smart thing to do is you're approaching it from the marketing standpoint, right? I think that's where a lot yeah. of people and that was a big wake up for me was, you know, when I got here from New York, I was offering videos, but then I realized that the people didn't have strategy because most business owners yeah. at the end of the day, guys, you probably heard me say this a million times. All business owner cares about is results. They don't care. Excellent. Like as long as it's ethical and like, you know, you're not doing like, you know, as long as you're doing legal shit and you can get them results as all their clients think about. So I think it's smart is, you know, you are approaching it from, Hey, we do Facebook advertisement and the vessel might happen to be video, but you could also do photos and stuff, which is smart. Yeah, for sure. I I'd like to even offer like my, my, I love business, like down to the core of me. I love business. So what, like, I'm not, I'm not married to video. I'm not married to photo. I'm, I'm married to business. So while I love making videos and I would hate for my offer to switch from making videos primarily to doing Facebook ads, I want to regenerate results and I want to grow a big business that allows me to, you know, do the things that I want to do, help the people that I need to help, as well as ideally it would be good to be able to pay other people, like be able to have them be able to support themselves off of work that I provide for them. So I would like to be able to be like, yeah, you need an email marketing funnel. We got you. You need a landing page. We got you. You need your website redesigned. We got you. So my, my main struggle right now is, is finding the people and, and pitching to them in a way that they're willing to hear me out. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that I've, I'm not, I'm definitely not the best video creator, but I definitely have a solid foundation on what it takes to make a good video. And I definitely have a solid grasp on what it takes to run a good ad campaign. So my, my thing right now has just been completely finding people that I can help and getting the meeting and then asking for, for money at the end, pretty much. Gotcha. So who have you reached out to so far? Like, what, what has been, have you found any luck within like any niches yet or what? Uh, so the only client that I have right now that I, that, that's like actually on my retainer is uh, this one meal prep company. And I do Facebook ads for them and I post on Instagram for them and I take their photos, make their videos. I do more than I want to, but they're my first ever client. We've been working together for over a year now. So, uh, you know, I've developed a good relationship with them and everything. So um, I don't have a ton, but I've offered my Facebook ad strategy thing to a couple of different clients that I've made videos with in the past. Mm -hmm. And they both seem really receptive to it. Uh, I just since it was the first two times of me actually pitching it to them, yeah. uh, I was, I, I, didn't, I don't think I had a very good close because at the end of the meeting, I'm like, they, they weren't ready to make a decision. So um, I think I walked them through the meeting effectively, but then at the end when it was like, okay, ask, Hey, okay. I want your money. I want to do business. Yeah. So let's make it happen. That's where I messed up. Gotcha. So how did you close? The, how did you finish that? Meal dealers, uh, the yeah. meal prep company. So oh, basically, no, like, I, oh no! So the the meeting you went to the two meetings. How did you yeah. remember how you finished that meeting? Uh, so I was like, yeah. So basically, what I would love for uh, love to do together is to either do this or do that, and then they're just like, yeah, you know, this sounds really good, but I, I just I need to you know think about it, and I'll, I'll get back to you like later this week. So I was, it's not, it's not that is, I could have done a better job closing gotcha. for sure yeah, but maybe good. also the client just needs it i think that also my issue is i overwhelmed them with so many different new term like buzzwords they're like yeah. pixel se like what is all this different stuff like retarget what is that you know what i mean mm -hmm. i feel yeah. that one i think that in i use this one a lot uh in the end of meetings for any for like doesn't matter what kind of if i'm like pitching a client at anything it's always uh based on our discussion today is there anything that we discussed that I miss or anything that you feel like that I'm not the right fit for this job. I let them answer that one. That always helps a lot. And they're like, no, I think that everything is great. Um, but that's cool. So when did the whole marketing 
aspect of the video come along for you? Because like that's one thing that really caught my eye about you is that like to me, I thought you're already thinking bigger when you're already, you know, asking about marketing, you hit me up and you're like, hey, what's up with the SEO stuff, right? So like what started to trigger you to look past the video production into the marketing? Uh, so yeah, basically what happened for me was um, I was like, uh, I was shooting these videos, right? For all these businesses. And I was like, yeah, this video is good for you. It's going to bring you money, da, 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 da. But then I would shoot all of these videos for myself, right? And I, I wouldn't have this huge return. And I was like, like, I know video is good for your business. I know it is. But can I say that this video will, you post it online and make you money? I can't say that. And I was talking to friends about how I, how I was suffering with this or how I was feeling about this. I was like, yeah, you know, like, I feel like I can't honestly say that they will get a return on investment. Um, so it's hard for me to sell video after video, but then I realized, wait, I can literally use this and position it in a way and put it in front of the right people that it will make them a return on investment. They will make sales or generate leads or whatever. And so, uh, and then I, I tested a bunch with, with meal dealers, the meal prep company. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I got results and I was like, wow, like this is a, this is unbelievable. Like this is a no brainer for anybody who, who can get these results to spend money on advertising it and, and me managing them and making videos and stuff. So going back to what I think the biggest thing based on what I'm hearing from you, and I don't know what your client strategy has been, but the fact that, you know, I had a very similar and what I, I think I connected with you a lot is like, I see a lot of things that you're doing that I found myself doing when I was younger and starting out. And for me, I learned how to run Facebook ads five years ago when I was doing photos and videos for this restaurant. I was working for this restaurant. I think I was getting paid like 125 bucks to shoot like six hours a night. They do like a lot of social media stuff. And, um, but this was like, con it was like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like I was guaranteed that I was gonna make that weekend work like at least 500 bucks shooting for them, which is great. Uh, but then they started running this new program and I was learning about marketing and, and Gary V's like Facebook ads, Facebook ads. So I reached out to her. I was like, yo, I'm learning Facebook ads. I was like, can you give me 250 bucks to spend on running ads for you? And she was like, she's like, that's it. I was like, I was like, I was thinking it was a lot of money. And she's like, I'll give you 250, start running ads and like shit popped off for them. So then like some ads didn't work, some ads did. And from there, like I ended up learning a lot. Um, and then recently I had more success with, um, the coffee company I work with pump house and, you know, what you just talked about for the meal prep company, the good thing about the ads for those is first, the targeting that you're able to do on Facebook for people that already want to, that want to eat healthy and, and like be able to target, target those type of people makes it so much better, but there's also that need, right? And I think it's one of those products that I think it's a low like sale that you're asking people to purchase into that makes it very easy for you to convert on and bring the client's results. Um, you know, versus I have people to hit me up like, hey, can you run a funnel for my my like uh, coaching course? Like how much is your course? It's like 500, it's like a thousand bucks. Like did your sales funnel for that? It's gonna be a lot harder for you to get somebody to convert on that. If you don't have the content behind it to really get somebody to convert. But if you're selling something like coffee or like, you know, meals on a local market, I think it's such a great place for a lot of people to get into, to build that retainer client as you start growing your business. Yeah, I'm also looking at uh, a couple of others. I've talked with this uh, lady. She runs a hair care product line. Okay. So, and it was crazy because she, I was telling her, I, and I went looking for some of her competition that I could be like, yeah, you know, you don't have a Facebook pixel. Your competition has a Facebook pixel and they're running ads right now. Check this out. I couldn't find it. But then she tells me at mid meeting, she's like, yeah, like look up this company XYZ. And so I look it up and I was like, wow, look at that. They're running ads and they have a Facebook pixel. So I'm looking at companies like that, that I know, as well as like, uh, I know this salon owner, I think she could benefit from that. Uh, this roofing company that I worked with a while ago, I think could really roofing. benefit from that. I would skip the salon completely. Yeah. Like, cause like, I like the roofing company. I love service-based businesses because there's a really big upsell, right? So like, even if you are sort of something that I'm going to go after this year is going to be custom home builders, like anywhere that has a product that has such a high margin, you know what I mean? Like 
the guy that I'm working with now, like, dude, he just sold a $32 million home. Like if I talk to him about doing like a $2,000 video, he's like, that's like to him, that's not a lot of money. Right. So yeah, be like, like, Yo. Stop talking to me about this. Just do it. Yeah. It's like, it was like 2000. He's like, I fucking like, I pissed that this weekend. Like, <laughs> you know, we have like, yo, $15,000 video. I'm going to be able to do this, this and that. Like right now, my friend Talia, I did like a property tour video for her. Her video has almost 50,000 views on YouTube in under two months. Imagine if you're a custom home builder and you're doing custom tours of the homes that you're building and, and getting that kind of viewership. You know what I mean? Like, what is that word to them? Um, but like with the salon and stuff like that, like I love my barbershop because that was the first video that I did. And it, you know, it gets you in front of a lot of people. But if you're going to be like targeting people, I'll look for people, like you said, the roofers, custom home builders, anyone that deals with big projects, they normally have, have a good budget or marketing budget to allocate to stuff like that, especially because no one else is doing it, right? Because like I was shopping around in my area, same thing you're doing, looking up all these different businesses, do they have pixels, are they running ads? No one's doing anything. Like they're barely keeping up with their social media. So if you're the guy in your industry that's doing what nobody else is doing, you're going to stand out. Yeah. I mean, I don't know any other videographers personally that are doing what I'm doing in my area, uh -huh. but I mean, it's it, like, it's definitely possible. Definitely gotcha. possible. So you're so, right now, what can I, is there anything I can help you with? Like, what do you got going on? Honestly, uh, if, you, so I'm trying to think because right now I'm at a point where I feel like the only thing that I really need to help is, is like a kick in the butt for actually going and getting meetings and, and selling. Um, I guess if you had any like strategies for, for like finding good clients and like how to reach out to them in a way that makes them reach out to you and book that meeting. Yeah. Um, so let me see, what would be a good strategy for you? I mean, first of all, I think the best way to start is going to be, are you using anything to track who you're talking to? I have Dubsado. For some reason, I haven't been using it to, right. to actually track what I'm doing. Somebody mentioned that to me today. I was like, yeah, you're right. I should be doing this. Yeah. So, I mean, I have Dubsado as well. And I think Dubsado, it's a good play. So, like, this is how I'm running my business right now. I'm using Dubsado for the payment portal with clients, the contracts. And we're setting up emails right now. We're, like, working on our sequences to send to clients. But right now, I just left Trello and I signed up for Monday, which I think Trello is still good. But I think you being able to put in just leads into a place and figure out like, you know, hot leads, cold leads and have different steps of like contacted once, contacted twice, contacted three times. I think you need to keep track of who you're contacting and, uh, and just write down notes when you contact and stuff like that, because, you know, we're not going to it's one of those things with the product that we're selling. It's not like selling coffee or selling a meal prep that, you know, within one or two ads, somebody might convert on it because they love, you know, coffee or they need food. Um, so I'd focus making sure you have a good base on who you're tracking. The second thing, are you tracking your emails with any type of like mail trackers? Who's opening them? Who's closing them? No, I have yeah. convert kit, but I, I haven't, I don't send the emails to there usually. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I use, I think HubSpot, there's different ones you just look for like an email tracker. There's one that I found that it's 60 bucks for the year, which is, I think for what it offered is pretty good. But you know, if you're reaching out to these clients, you need to find out who's opening your, your email and who isn't. Cause if not, you're, like, you're just shooting in the dark and hoping to hit something. Um, it's really good to find out, you know, the way we do it, every 10 emails will change the header another 10 emails would change the body and we'll see which one had more clicks and stuff like that um and then we start using more of those that's just going to help you not burn any calm bridges or opportunities in the beginning where you're getting started out so you know with your experience with facebook ads what i would be doing is i'd start looking up these businesses that you potentially might want to work with, if they already have a Facebook pixel or they're running ads, like something I do, I'm rolling, scrolling through Instagram. I'll get like random ads from like an AC company company or something. I'll save those ads 
and then I'll, I'll try to go into their funnel and see what they're actually doing. But then also see, because you can go to Facebook ads library and look at what they're doing, right? So like you yep. saw that their ad sucks. I'm like, I can make you guys a better ad and run it for you. These are my prices. They're already being active in advertisement and you can provide them something that they're not already doing. They're already a hot lead, right? Be like, hey, I saw your ad. Um, what are you know, how's this working for you? You know what I mean? Like, cause you're, you're in a very niche place right now that you already know how to run the ads. So like anyone that I see locally that I'm getting ads from, I save those ads and I hit them up. Hey, just want to find out, you know, you know, like you don't know me, I'm Rodrigo. I do videos and you know, I see that you're running ads. I was just curious to how they're working for you. If you're interested in talking about maybe running some videos. So you, you found email to be the most, um, the most um, effective way of getting people to respond. Cause for me, I think usually DMS are, are better. Like it, maybe even a voice message in a DM. Those are good too. I think it's a little bit of both. Right. And I think it depends with who you're talking to. Cause like how old is the person like in a range of how old is the person that you're talking to that, that has the food prep company. He's like, I think he's like late twenties, like probably you know what I mean? older than 25, less than 30. Yeah. Exactly. So in that demographic, I think it works. My clientele, the business owners I'm talking to or the CMOs, CFOs, they are in the 40 and above. So for me to reach to them on a DM, it's not a place that they are used to making those type of connections with me right. hitting you up now trying to sell a course online through a DM. We're so used to that. That's very common practice for us. But I think for that older generation, you trying to reach them on a DM, unless you're somebody like Gary V. It's not one of those places that they're going to be like, like, yo, who the fuck is this kid trying to sell me on a, on a DM? So I think there needs yeah. to be context what you're doing. You see a company that's doing a lot of social media. Oh, to go back to what I was saying, the other reason I, I'm always sometimes not a big fan of the DMs and reaching out to companies is that normally some companies, I'll say 50% of them, are hiring somebody to do their social media marketing for them. Yeah. So what happens, you hit them up trying to do something. And I know this personally because someone else that I coached literally told me that the company she was working for, somebody DM their account trying to get them hired. She blocked them from being able to contact that client. So, you know what I mean? And this is going to happen to you. I mean, I've been in a situation too. Like somebody's like, oh, you're trying to fucking ask my client if you could do marketing for them? Like, no, nah, fuck. Get like, out of here. <laughs> never, this message, you know, never happened. So you get a little skeptical about that. Now you, sh you shoot them an email. There's, you know, somebody in that business is actually going to come across the email. And it's the same thing. If you're going to email, like, dude, I get so many emails. Hey, Tasca Studios. Da -da -da -da. I'm like, bro, I am so public about, you know, my name is on my website. All my information is on there. If you're emailing me on my business and you're not looking up me before you email me to any sort of extent, I'm not going to convert or connect with you, right? Like you, there needs to be a little bit of the research done prior. Um, so you have some sort of base to connect with that person in. So that's kind of like what I would like approach into doing. I think it's possible to do the social media stuff, right? But I would also do a little bit of research and finding out, you know, how can you reach these people? Yeah, and that, that's been my main thing. Like just trying to find the clients that I think would benefit from my, my service and then having them respond and then getting the meeting with them. But like, I've, I've been trying to, to sell this service like hard for like nine days now. Gotcha. So, so what's your price? Do you mind me asking what's your price point for the service? Yeah. What are you trying to do? No, I don't mind at all. So I, I'm offering two different levels. The first level is just a retargeting campaign. We run one campaign pixels on the, on the website, $500 management from me. That's my monthly fee. And then whatever they can expect to spend three to $500 in ad spend. Um, and then for the second offer, it's more high ticket, $1,500 a month retainer, um, uh, for me to manage up to five campaigns or up to $10,000 in ad spend. Okay. That's nice. So, yeah. And, and then from there, any videos I was thinking like selling them for anywhere between like seven fifty and twelve fifty. Um, what are you charging for videos? It depends on every video. I mean, oh, it, it's, hard. it changed. So I've done videos for as low as like 125 bucks. Like I, the client that I worked with for a while, we were doing two videos for 250. Mm. 
-hmm. And then we meet up every time just 250 a video, all the time, fitness videos. But then I've sold videos for as high as 1500. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, like, I think for what you're, like, in your situation, this is something, even a price point that I'm thinking about considering doing, because right now I'm taking on a couple of people um, locally as, like, apprentices, and I'm I'm playing with the idea of doing these $500 videos, and I'm thinking I'm doing a very similar package. There's going to be $500 monthly fee to manage your ads, 500 bucks for a video, and then we'll do $500 in ad spend. So it's a $1,500 package for a marketing video that we'll use every month. For This is when you do a three-month commitment. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's the other big thing too. And like, I know that you've been learning a little bit more about this stuff. So like, I think um, when you are running these Facebook ads, you need to let people know that like, you know, you need to be at least invested to a three month campaign to really, yeah. and that's different. Like, you know, the coffee people, like I said, there are certain situations guys that the product will be different. Like for a coffee, I was running ads in the first month, it pops off, it's coffee. It's very easy to for you to sell that. So there's something to consider, but for a lot of other businesses, like, you know, the first month of just setting up the ads, running them, figuring out like which target, which of the targeting is working better, which ad sets are working better. There is a little bit of that that needs to happen. And clients think it's like, you know, you're going to fucking put 500 bucks into it and you, it's just going to start spitting out cash. And it's just not. So yeah. having that realistic conversation with them. Yeah. Important. Yeah. I, I always let them know like, hey, not every ad set's going to be, not every ad is going to be profitable. You know, we're going to spend around three to $500 just in testing. After that, we should be profitable. Yeah. We should be profitable. So, and I was like, and, and another thing that I always tell them is the fact, is the fact that, you know, even that we agree right now on the phone, that it's going to be three to $500 in ad spend. We can always turn it off after, you, after we spend 250 mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not going to be one charge of three to $500 because I feel like some of the business owners are, well, especially with COVID, they're, they're like more tight budgets and yeah. uh, less keen to spend with a, 21 year old boy like myself <laughs> no but it, that's the thing too and i think that's a big thing right now with business is that we have to be human with the other human on the other side right as much as you want to do business you want to make money you also need to understand that we are going through a certain period of time right now that we need to be flexible with other people and i think it's yeah. great that you, you let them know that like hey i'm willing to work with you and the good thing i always tell clients is um, and what happened with me with the first company I was working with is that sometimes when the ads get really good, they actually get cheaper, right? Yeah. So, you know, your, your click through rate price is going down. So my client was like, she gave me 500 bucks a month to spend after that. But then our ads started getting so good that she was only spending like 350 or something like that. And I made the mistake when I learned that I was charging her the same amount for what I was like, whatever she was spending is how much I was charging her. So if she was spending okay. 300 bucks, I was charging her 300 bucks. And when the ads are getting less and less, it's like, fuck, I like, I'm still doing kind of the same amount of work, but you know what I mean? Cause you're still managing the ads, but I'm making less yeah. money now because I got better at what I was doing. I was like, okay, I'm not doing that pricing model anymore. But I talked to some people on clubhouse uh, yesterday or two days ago and they I, I asked them about my situation and what they think i should do uh and they they mentioned to me that most people that are like agency level freaking run facebook ads for their whole business campaign whatever it is uh usually they spend like the charge is a percentage of of the ad spend so yeah i mean when you're spending 300 bucks like 10 percent of the ad spend is nothing so yeah actually i think you mentioned that it was a percentage of the ad spend as well as like a flat fee on top so um I think, what is it, not Robert, something, the guy sold with the video, his thing was, it was either like, it was either 500 bucks or 25% of the ad spend over like a sound, like if it was like over $5,000, it was their fee plus 25% or whatever they spent. So it can get tricky and then, you know, but I think in the beginning, I think for most people, they just need to get out there and run. So like, okay, so you've been doing this for a little bit. For someone that is just getting started and they're gonna run their first Facebook ad, what would be a campaign that you would recommend for them to try out? Um, Lookalike audience. It depends on, the, on who the client is. If it's like a, a client with an existing uh, customer list, fire up a nice, a nice, uh, uh, 
uh, lookalike audience campaign, targeting them with a like an offer, 15% off or something like that. I found huge results and sell in, in my ads. Lookalike audiences are huge. Like I'm making tons of sales right now with a lookalike audience for my meal prep client. Um, but when you when you say, hey, location, problem that you're solving, mm -hmm. solution, call to action. That's like the most amazing way that you could set up the ad. Because that's literally like, they're like, oh, I'm Richmond. Like for, I'm running an ad right now for this meal prep company in Richmond. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm running like five different campaigns compared to like, I think all the, the second closest campaign with as many link clicks is like 16. The Richmond campaigns and it says, hey, Richmond it has 116 link clicks or something like that right now. Yeah. So yeah, look like audiences and talking to who you're selling to. Cool, cool. And then I guess with the last thing, any tips for a videographer just getting started? What would you wish you knew when you're just getting started in this? Uh, how important spec work is. I mean, there's like lists of lists of lists of things that I could say here, but like spec work will result in you getting a better skill and show and being able to show people that you can sell something or like make something that they actually want. You know, I, I think I was watching a video. I don't know whose video it was. They were mentioning how most beginner videographers go out into a park and they shoot sun flares and, you know, leaves and all this stuff. And, you know, while it might be amazing, beautiful B-roll, nobody's going to be like, that guy is going to make me an amazing dentist video. So spec work. I've made money from it. I've made connections from it. My portfolio is better because of it. I learned. So, yeah. That definitely I means that was a thing for me because that's living in New York. I did fashion stuff. I moved down here. I hit up business owners and they're like, like hey great video but like what's this model how is this model modeling you know, behind the scenes gonna translate to a business video for me and then i think the big thing that you talked about is that for a lot of business owners we're by showing them that we're able to do something by like by doing spec work we showed them that we're able to do something and it's helping them reduce risk in their mind right because like for any business owner you taking your time out of your day to shoot a video with a kid that you don't know for your business is a risk that you're taking or losing or either you're losing money or, or losing your time right and for most business owners those are things that we don't want to lose so i think that's awesome you brought that up awesome right where can people find you uh you can check out my instagram flicks by ryan uh yeah at flicks by ryan f-l-i-x by ryan um i appreciate it that's pretty much it i mean i have my website everything but hit me up on instagram if you have any questions i'm happy to help uh, i hope there's some valuable content on there for anybody watching this um cool. yeah rodrigo i really appreciate it for sure and then if you guys don't know i'll also tag it here uh brian's one of the videographers that i did the website review on there so if you guys want to check out some of his work and check out what he's doing uh you know you can check out his old website and you can check out his new website now and see the changes that he made bro thank you for your time man and then uh, we will be in touch awesome sounds good thanks dude all right man peace peace